Hello and welcome to a new video from Advanced Power Query Series, video APQ 0.1. We already posted seven videos in this series before this video. However, you can consider this as the second video. The right place for this video is number two. The previous one was APQ 0.0. Today we are going to continue what we started last time. So you can consider it the part two of M language step by step or the beginner's guide for M language. A quick reminder of the discussion that we had in the previous video. We had an introduction about M language structure, the applied steps, expressions and values, and value types in M language. And we already started to discuss the value types. We looked at primitive value, function value, but we didn't discuss the structured data values. Today, we are going to start discussing the structured data values. We are going to talk about the list, the record, and the table. Let's go directly and start by the first part, which is basically the list. So what is a list? A list is a zero based ordered sequence of values enclosed in curly brackets. So this means that if you want to form a list or create a list, you need to use the curly braces or curly brackets and it is zero based or zero ordered. What this means, if you look at the first example here, I have a list of three numbers, two, four, and six. For Power Query, the position of the first number, which is basically two, is zero, not one. So the position of two in this list is zero. The position of four in this list is one, and the position of six is two, not three, and this is very important. So if I want to create a list of three numbers, like two, four, six, I can just put them inside carry braces, and I separate them with a comma. Also, I can create a list of a range of numbers, meaning that I can just put two curly brackets. I start, let's say, with number one, and if I want to create a list from one to 100, I can just use a double dot, as you can see here. Also, you can create a list of lists, or you can say a sublist for the list. If you look at this syntax here, you can see that I have two curly brackets in red, and inside these two curly brackets, I have pairs of numbers. And each pair is enclosed again inside two curly brackets, meaning that I will have a list of three lists. The first one contains two and four, second contains six and eight, and the last one containing 10 and 12, and all enclosed inside one big list. Also, you can create a list of records, and we are not going to discuss in details how to create a record right now, because we are going to come to this later in this video. However, between these two square brackets, I have a record, and this record of only two fields, first one ID, and second one is name, and I have two records inside one big list. So you can create a list of values, single values or primitive values like 246. You can have a list of a range, you can have lists inside a list, and also you can have list of records. If you want to access a value from a list, we need to use the position of the item inside the list, and this should be written inside again two curly braces as you can see here. So in the first example, we have three numbers inside a list or three items inside the list, two, four, and six. If we need to access the first item, which is basically the number two, we are going to type inside two curly brackets the position of number two. Position of number two is basically zero because the power query is zero based. So here the position is zero, one, and two. I need to access the first position or the first item. So I'm going to type between curly brackets number zero. But what we can do if we have a list of lists, like the second example that we have here, we have three lists, two and four is a list, six and eight is a list, 10 and 12 is the list, and all is enclosed inside one big list. I need to access an item from one of the sub lists. What can I do? I can use the curly bracket twice, and for each and every one, I can use the positions again. So I need to access the third list, which is basically the 10 and 12. 
the position of the third list is basically two that's why you will find two written at the beginning at the first two carry braces the number two written in order to access the third list from the third list we need to access the second item which is basically the number 12 the position of the second item within the small list or the sub list is the position number two that's why you find number one wrote inside the curly braces meaning that we need to access the second item of the third list same goes for the records i need to access the second record from a list containing records the second record is basically id3 and name ahmed i need to access the second position second position i'm going to type between two curly braces number one because the first position is zero and the second position is one let's try to write some code together in order to practice what we already explained i am already inside power query and this is the advanced editor i already created a blank query i called it list example i'm going to start by defining a new variable i'm going to call it my list and then equal and inside two curly brackets i'm going to write two and then comma and four comma and six and then enter and then in because this is the last step in my query and this should be in my list i'm going to click on done and here you go you have a list of three numbers two four and six what if i need to access the second item of this list which is basically number four let me go back to view and then advanced editor and just after this list i'm going to open another curly bracket the position of the second item is basically number one why because the first position is zero and then one and then two as we mentioned before it is zero based i'm going to click on done and here you go you have a single value of number four which is basically the second value or the second item from this list let me go back view and then advanced editor i'm going to define a new variable comma and then enter i'm going to call this my range and then equal i'm going to create a range inside a list so i'm going to open a curly bracket and then one double dot and then 10 let me change my list to my range and then done and here you go you have a list from 1 to 10 created by just writing one double dot and then 10 enclosed inside curly brackets one more time view advanced editor i'm going to define another variable let me call it list of lists equals and then i'm going to open curly brackets and inside the curly brackets i'm going to open another pair of curly brackets i'm going to write two comma four and then outside the first pair another comma again two pairs of curly brackets six comma eight again outside of the curly brackets comma new pair of curly brackets 10 comma and 12 i'm going to change my range to list of lists and then done and here you go you have a list and i have three lists inside this list if you want to check the content of the sub list you can just select the white space on the right hand side and you can see the content of the sub list in the preview down here you can go back i can go back to the advanced editor after this list i can just open another curly bracket i need to access the second list so i'm going to write one and then i want to access let's say the first item of the second list so i'm going to open another two curly braces and type zero and then done and here you go we managed to access the first item of the second list which is basically number six let me go back view advanced editor this time i'm going to create a list of records comma and enter let me define new variable list of records and then equal i'm going to open a curly bracket let me define a record by opening a square bracket the first field will be id equal one and then comma the second field is name a name will be text so i'm going to type equal and then open double quotes name will be ahmed here is my first record comma to enter the second record again open a square bracket id equals two comma name equals Tarek between double quotes and let me change this to list of records and then done 
and here you go you have a list of two records and you can check the content of the records inside the preview by just clicking the white space on the right hand side of the word record if i want to access one of these records let's say the first record i can go back to view i can just do it for the formula bar but just for practice let me always go back to advanced editor and from advanced editor just after this list i can just open another pair of curly brackets and type zero in order to access the first record and then done and here you go you have one record id one and name is ahmed a record is basically a one row of information as you can see here i have only one row of information however if you look at the definition it says a record is a set of fields we all know that fields is a column so how a row is a set of fields this is true why because each and every piece of info inside this row needs a definition if we take an example like c100 that we can see here it is defined by being an order id so each and every piece of info should come in pairs i should have a pair of name and value and this is true for each and every piece of info of the record not only this the headers of the record should be unique meaning that i cannot have the vendor as a field header twice inside the same record another important piece of info if you try to look or to view a record inside the power query editor you will notice that it is presented in a vertical direction not in a horizontal direction you can notice here here is the headers of all fields and here is the value of each and every field unlike the list if you want to create a record you should use the square bracket for lists we usually use the curly bracket but for records you are going to use the square bracket in this example i'm trying to create a new record i give it a name as my record and then the equal sign and then i used the square bracket and then i started to enter the pair of infos as we described in the previous slide so my first field is order id and then the value for this order id is c100 and because it is a text so i used the double quotation the second field for the record is vendor triple a and then amount amount is not a text it is a number that's why i didn't use the double quotation and finally the date and i used the hash date in order to create the date exactly like what we did in the previous video if you want to access a specific field from a record you can start by referencing the name of the record so i have a record here called my record i started by giving the reference to this record and then i opened the square bracket again and then i typed the name of the field again it's unlike the list in the list we usually use the curly bracket and enter the position of the item inside the list and it starts from zero up to the final position of the list this is unlike the record for the record you should mention the name of the specific field you have to input the text name of the specific field in order to access a specific piece of info from a record let's try to write some code together to practice the record so i'm going to the data ribbon from the left hand side get data i'm going to create a blank query so from other sources then blank query this will trigger the power query editor the default is query one let me change the name to something like record example and then enter and from view advanced editor let me delete the default step which is basically the source i'm going to define a new variable i'm going to call it my record and then equal i already have a copy of the code that we presented in the powerpoint Control v to paste and let's have a look together i have a four fields record first one is order id i give it value c100 vendor triple a amount 100 and then date which is basically 31st of december 2020 let me change in source to be in my record then done and let's have a look i have a query with only one record and you can see it is presented in a vertical direction i have each and every name of the fields and each and every value assigned to each and every field let's try to access one value from this record 
for example i'm going to access the vendor name so i'm going back to view and then advanced editor and i'm going to define a new variable comma and then enter i'm going to define variable called result and then equal i'm going to reference the name of the query my record and then i'm going to open a square bracket and i'm going to type vendor then i'm going to change my record to be result and then done and here you go you have a single value of triple a which is basically the vendor name inside the record that we created together a table is nothing but some values organized into named columns and rows we all know tables we work with tables but i want to highlight some points here the first one is rows of the table is also zero based exactly like the list so the position of the first row of a table is zero the position of second row is one and the position of third row is two also you can consider each and every row of a table as a record so the first row is a record the second row is a record and the third row is a record you can also consider each and every column as a list so we have here four lists list of orders list of vendors list of amounts and list of dates each and every column of a table should have a name and this name should be unique for the table so i cannot see the order id as a column header or a column label twice in the same table also if you think of any value inside the table it is nothing but the intersection between a record and a list or the intersection between a row and a column if you want to form a table inside power query you can use the hash table keyword the hash table keyword requires you to enter two lists the first list containing the headers of the table and then the second list will be list of lists and each and every sublist containing the data for the records so if you look at this example i have a table with four columns first column is order id and then vendor amount and date all of this enclosed inside the list and then i have another list to contain all the records of the table so the first list containing a record and the values for the record is c100 for order date triple a for vendor 100 for amount and december 31st 2020 for the date and so on and so forth for the rest of the records how can we access data from a table in any table you can access a row you can access a column or you can access a specific value or the intersection between a column and a row so if you want to access a row which is basically a record when you access a row of a table you are trying to access a record and if you want to do so let's look at the first example you want to access the first row of the table my table so you just reference the name of the table and then between two curly brackets you use the position of the row so the curly brackets in this case is the position operator you can use it to specify the position of the row inside the table the first row for sure will have the position zero because the rows of the table is zero based and the curly brackets exactly the same that we use for accessing an item inside a list if you want to access a column which is basically a list from the table you are going to reference the name of the table and between two square brackets you are going to specify the name of the column exactly like what we do for the record when you want to specify a field from a record and you can call these two square brackets in this case the field access operator and finally if you want to access a specific value from a table which is basically the intersection between a column and a row or the intersection between a record and a list you are going to use both operator the curly bracket the position operator so in this case i need to access the second row that's why i wrote number one and then i need to access the field called date or the column called date that's why i put the name date between two square bracket and in this case i'm going to extract the date of the record number two time for some practice right click new query other sources and blank query let me call this table example view advanced editor i'm going to delete the default and then let me define a new variable called my table equal i already have the code that we presented in the powerpoint control v 
to paste let's have a quick look together i have the hash table then i open the brackets i have my first list enclosed in two curly brackets the first list contains the headers of the rows order id vendor amount and date then i have a list of lists here is the two curly brackets for the big list and then i have three sublists here first one containing the first record which is basically one value for each and every column or each and every field c100 for order id triple a for vendor 100 for amount and then 31st december 2020 for date and so on and so forth then i need to change after in i need to change this to be my table and let's have a look done and here you go a table of four columns and three records what if we want to access the first row of this table or the first record of this table no problem view advanced editor let's define a new variable comma and enter let me call this one first row then equal i need to reference the variable containing the table which is basically my table and then curly bracket i need the first row so i'm going to use zero because the rows of the table is zero based let me change this to first row and then done and here you go you have the first row in a form of record you have the field names and also you have the value for each and every field let's try something different view advanced editor let me define a new variable comma and enter this time i'm going to call this variable vendor column equal the variable containing the table is my table or the step containing the table is my table and then between two square brackets i'm going to specify the name of the column or the name of the field which is basically vendor i'm going to change this also to vendor column and then done and here you go you will notice that you have a list of all the vendor names triple a triple x and triple b you can simply notice that the header disappeared because this is a list it is not a one column table it is a list and any function needs an input of a list you can just use this syntax the name of the table and then the name of the column between two square brackets let's try the final one view advanced editor comma and enter and let's define a new variable i'm going to call this date of first row equal again i'm going to reference the table or the variable containing the table which is basically my table between two carrier brackets i'm going to specify the position of the row in this case i need the first row so i'm going to use the zero and then between two square brackets i'm going to specify the name of the field or the name of the column which is basically date and then i'm going to change this to date of first row done and here you go you have 31st december 2020 which is basically the date inside the first row of this table here is the end of part two of m language beginners guide in the third part we are going to solve a very basic example of building a query but for sake of the practice we are going to build the query end to end inside the advanced editor we are not going to use the user interface at all i know that in the practice you usually mix between both advanced editor or sometimes use the formula bar and also the user interface but for the sake of training and practice next time we are going to build a query 100 from the advanced editor and we are going to capitalize on some of the information that we already explained during part one and part two if you like this video please like it subscribe and leave a comment and please stay tuned for the third part and bye